Yes, we are live. This is a Sunday mindset session. Luke Moroney here, Tony Meredith over there in the red corner. That's blue, me. Blue. You're, I'm, I'm, I'm the blue. I'm you're blue. The blue. We're this week. I'm blue. You're red. Whatever. Good it's, morning. It's kind of crazy, but you know, this is a time that on a Sunday morning, you've got to check in with yourself, see what's going on, see what the things that are going up in your mind, so you can actually put yourself in a perspective of living your life the best way for you. Greg, Kat, good to see you on. Luke, happy, how are you, mate? Happy ha- Sunday. Happy Sunday to you. We're living the best life. I mean, my gosh, look at where we are. So this is Queensland. This is Redland Bay in Queensland. Absolutely gorgeous. Thought we'd come to you from a different location, just showcasing Queensland. Luke and I may get a job uh, with tourism Queensland. Who knows? But here we are. Have a look at We're this. We're showcasing uh, on, on, Brisbane uh, and Queensland. Absolutely. You know, oh, I think it was out of necessity and convenience more than anything else, but we get around, <laughs> and that's great. Don't let the truth get in the way of a good story, Luke. Never, <laughs> never, ever, ever, ever. Uh, no, Tony, wait, listen, listen, I've got something for you. So one of the things great. is, firstly, this is our 60th, Sunday mindset session, which is six a real days. six zero, right? Which is a real milestone. I think we're in breaking itself. records everywhere today. Well, break, well, the other record that you've broke, you've broken, I haven't, uh, is that you've done nine hundred and fifty seven k runs in a row, which is just phenomenal, mate. So well done, well Thank done, you. absolutely Thank awesome, you. awesome effort. Claps to uh, me. Yeah, claps, claps to Luke. Amazing effort. Uh, but look, I want to talk about. Um, so it's our sixtieth Sunday mindset session, and one of the things that we love about this uh, Sunday morning is that a we get to give value to everybody, but also b uh, we get to hear back from people, uh, uh, fans, uh, how they're going, etc. Lots hey, we've of fans. Had, we've had a fan this week who's actually sent us a present. <laughs> uh, sent, sent us a present. So just Here we go. Bear, bear with me a moment. <laughs> Tony's got to duck down for cover. So uh, this, this... Tony Gallagher, good to see you on. Uh, looks great. Yeah, it is great. Back onto Tony. He's got something to say. As uh, always. We've got, a, we've got a present. So we've got a little present here for, uh, for Luke. I got one as well. And this has come from one of our very special fans. Uh, and she wants there to be more light. The light. Right. Now, perhaps we need it this morning. Uh, we sort of uh, had a little bit of fiddling around trying to get the light position. But, mate, this is for you. So there you go. Thank so that's, you. That's, that's a very special present for you. Let there Thank be you more light. The, let there be more light. And, we're, <laughs> and we, you know what we're about? Shining the light on you guys, shining the light on us. And that's what it's all about. So maybe the more light will even help you even more. So Fantastic. Great very to good. have you on. So back to, the, back to the cricket. Shay and Robert, good to have you on. Sunday Mindset Session is the time and the, the topic we really want to talk about today is being a perfectionist. So many people want to strive in t- terms of getting things absolutely right. Mm. And the question is why? Mm. Why? Tony says, let there be light. Tony's got one of those as there, well. There you go. Tony let there Gallagher. be light. Fantastic, Tony. Very good. Uh, so why? Well, ultimately, uh, it's because people are fearful of being criticised. Mm. That's it. They want things to be absolutely perfect because when things are perfect, then no one can criticise them in their own mind. But of course, uh, perfectionism uh, or perfectionistic thinking is uh, is quite destructive, and we're going to get into that throughout the course of the morning. We're going to get Tony moving up. Yep. Beautiful. Socially distancing? No, no, no. Just get in the middle, <laughs> like you know. We're going to get like centre ourselves. We've so got be, everyone we've got to be perfect. No, it's, it's about just getting a little bit, just improving each and every day, right? I love it. Improving love it. each and every day. Sean, good to have you on. Uh, Peter's also come on, lots of people, but think about the perfectionist in you. Hmm. I guess at different times, we're all gonna, always going to have that level of, we want to do better, yeah, strive better. Yeah, yeah. I even talked about it today, um, hmm. reflecting on something for me. Hmm. Tony, uh, I actually said to Tony, I've gone 950 days of running in a row. And it was like, well, how does it feel? And then straight away, hmm. I've said, well, there's a guy up in Brisbane, he's done 2,260 something days in a row. Hmm. But straight away, I went to that point, instead of just like, yay me, hmm. That initial thought of being like getting it perfect or getting to a level or comparing ourselves to other yeah. is uh, a detriment probably to me. Yeah. Just reflect on myself and what I've achieved and what I've done rather than you know, compare myself to something else or compare myself to a, like a perfect level. Yeah, and look, there's nothing wrong with wanting to improve, right? There's a personal best. We talked about PBs, personal best. We were told this as kiddies, uh, doing athletics carnivals and swimming carnivals, go for your PB, and the same applies. So there's nothing, uh, was it something I said? 
No. <laughs> so, so, there, so there's nothing wrong with uh, wanting to improve, but perfectionistic thinking is, is quite dangerous. It's interesting when Luke said uh, the comment, we are just uh, getting coffee before, and I said to him, my gosh, that's amazing, at like 9.50, I'm struggling to get two days in a row, right? So for you, <laughs> for you to get 9.50 is amazing. And it's actually interesting where, where everyone's at because uh, Luke is sitting there going, hey, there's a guy over 2,000. And for the rest of us who are here, we're looking at you, mate, and we're going, wow. Like mm. nine, if we could get to a quarter of that uh, in succession, that would be an awesome. Uh, an awesome feat for all of us. So oh, well, uh, even Greg says you've done <laughs> 950 more than me. Yeah, that's, uh, ab- <laughs> absolutely. If I can string two together in succession, then that is an amazing uh, that's an amazing run for me. So uh, so anyway, so perfectionistic thinking. Look, it, it, it is it's so um, debilitating. It can hold you back because the reality mm. is that we can't be perfect, right? It's great to improve, and we come here each and every Sunday uh, with the goal of helping you all improve. So improving is very different to perfectionistic thinking. Perfectionistic thinking as where we aim for perfect, we want it to be perfect, and we hold ourselves back from even starting because we're fearful that we're not going to get to perfect. So if we're not going to be at perfect, why do we even start? I guess I take that running from the, the guy in Brisbane that's on 2200 yeah. as a motivation for me to keep going. Yeah. And I think it, it really triggered me, uh, like hearing about it, someone mentioned about him, uh, this person, his name's Adam up in yeah. Brisbane. Yeah. Yeah. It was actually you, wasn't it? No, I don't think it was me. Okay, anyway, it was someone who, li- who lives up in Brisbane that told me about this guy who's been doing 2,000 odd days of running yeah. and so forth. And I was like, well, if he can do it, why can't I? Absolutely. It was kind of that Roger Bannister that Ro- we're Ro- talking about. Ro- Roger Bannister effect. It happens uh, often. In fact, I saw a post from Davina yesterday and it was interesting because it was about some dogs uh, in a cage. And it was interesting on a couple of levels. So one is that uh, a dog was climbing vertical up this cage to get out. And, uh, and once he started, then all these other dogs jumped out and was amazing. How, what was interesting was that, so that's the Roger Bannister effect, but also it was interesting because there's a lot of other people, and some of them are here this morning, where they looked at dogs in a cage and they thought, oh my gosh, isn't that dreadful that it's dogs in the cage? So I've looked at it and gone, isn't that amazing dogs climbing out of the cage going to freedom? How do you Wh- think whereas, of yes, your perception and your perspective on perspective. life? The meaning, right? It's the meaning. It's the glass half full, glass half empty. It's the way in which people can look at exactly the same thing and get to very, very different uh, perspectives, interpretations, or meanings. So it was, it was fascinating on a couple of fronts. Uh, it, it's right now on this whole coronavirus thing, mm. you know, and how people see the perspective of what's going on. Mm. Um, you know, are you living your life based on what's going on in the media on a constant daily basis? Yeah. Yeah. And you're, you know, I, I guess we're going off on a little bit of a tangent right now. But <laughs> what we have for the normal. last 59 episodes, why not today, right? Yeah, yeah. Why change it up? <laughs> well, we change it up. It's on a constant basis. But it's, you know, having that negative thought about what you're not doing or what, what's not going on or the, or the dramas that are surrounding um, what is happening rather than seeing, well, how's it good in, in coming? It's like, you know, are you sad and, and do you cry and get upset? when things are really bad, or do you get crying upset when, or cry actually from those happy tears? Mm, mm, Um, You know, I I get it, like for me personally, I probably get a little bit emotional around when someone has done something so good mm, mm, and how they've helped someone or helped mm, a society mm, mm, or just done something incredible. If you think about those, some of those movies where, you know, they've achieved so much and they've gone so far and in the end, you know, look what they've accomplished. Yeah. You know, I'm, maybe I'm the you, blind mate. side comes oh, to wow. mind. Blind, blind side. The other one for me, uh, things like, uh, uh, you know, Deepwater Horizon, uh, you know, just these true movies uh, where people have just pushed beyond uh, the normal limits and it really, it's emotional for me as well. So it's, uh, it's, it's amazing to see. Good Ama- comment there from Christina. Emotions just flow. Great. Great. Yeah, so, so one of the things with emotions just flowing, but is you want to manage that because quite often we let our emotions get the better of us, right? It's not always the positive emotions. It could be the negative emotions. And going back to the whole coronavirus thing, it's where, ne- yes, I don't for a moment doubt that there's devastation, death, health issues, economic issues, all of the above, right? But if you are in Victoria, for example, and you're having to work from home or perhaps you're not working at the moment, well, you have got this thing called time. And it's the biggest... Um, excuse that I hear from my clients around the inability to achieve something. I don't have enough time. And so for me, I look at it and go, well, now that's no longer an excuse. So now what are you going to do? And it's fascinating because people who then historically have said, well, I don't have enough time, then they'll come up with a different excuse, right? And a different excuse. And I believe that those people will constantly find excuses. If you're one of those people, it's about look for, well, now that you do have the time, 
how do I leverage that time to be most productive to move forward? There are so many different things that you can be doing uh, with your time. So yes, I understand that COVID-19 is devastating. I, not for one moment do I think it's not, because it isn't. Here in Queensland, you know, we're, we're absolutely trying to, you know, batten down the borders, etc. But it's also about, you know, what are the positives that you can get out of this? Uh, one of them is the whole connectedness, right? Connectedness being that even though that we're less connected as in the physicality, I know for me, I've been more connected because I'm diving onto Zoom a whole lot more. So whilst it's not the same, it's certainly a positive uh, that I've got out of uh, the COVID-19 situation. Yeah, it was kind of interesting, I guess, before this video, um, talking about perspective, talking about negative, you, you know, in, in saying and being honest with ourselves yeah, about yeah. this, you did bring about, uh, up about the two girls that, you know, flew up from Melbourne yep, to yep, Brisbane. Yep. Um, and, you know, the, the unfortunate uh, thing of them then spreading uh, you know, this illness yep. around, yep. you know, are we thinking ourselves about uh, negative things as well around it and focusing on that, the anger that is going on around, because I know some of the Facebook posts I've been commenting on over the last week have that negative idea and this is, this is wrong, this is that, 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 or the financial system and all that sort of thing. Mm. And it was like, is it a time that you're rising, about, rising to the challenge? Mm and getting there. So I guess in your thoughts, Tony, and your perspective, mm. and then other people were seeing on social media talk about that. Mm. So, re you know, basically reflecting on everything that's going on, mm. are we keeping that true perspective on an ongoing basis or are we allowing that influence from media and other things yeah. being yeah. effective? Yeah. So to a certain extent, that's uh, something that I guess for you that could have been, you know, brought about another way or another direction. Sure, no, ab absolutely, and certainly, uh, you know, so I I'm I here to challenge Tony. Yeah, good. Guys. No, look, I, I, I take take your point, and so uh, you know, the point I was making is that it, it was devastating that uh, that's happened because uh, Queensland's had a pretty good run. But here's the thing: it was probably going to happen uh, anyway because as much as 99.9% uh, .9 of people are doing the right thing, it doesn't take much for it to get out of hand, and that's the thing, right? You can see what's happening in Melbourne. Unfortunately, what's happening in Sydney, uh, and now uh, we're in Brisbane. And whilst I've been on here the last few weeks and joking about, hey we've got all the sporting events. I mean, the reality is that it's not going to take much for this thing to, to take uh, take a hold. So uh, that, that was the comment. But, mate, happy for you to challenge me and pick me up on, on all sorts of stuff. Uh, that's what it's all about. It's about uh, uh, all of us improving, worry, constantly Tony improving. does enough himself of challenging me, so that's all good. So I might <laughs> do it live, so it's actually in... in there's uh, a record of it. There's a, absolutely a record of it. Let's get into some of the topics now <laughs> yes. around perfectionism. Uh, it, it's a good idea for us to explore these on a deeper level. Mm. Um, we always talked about deep conversations, like yeah. which we spoke about last, last week, which week. is our, yeah. our topic. But the first one is, do you need to be right? Do you need to be right? Have a think about that for a moment. There's so many people in conversations needing to be right. And I, I've probably been guilty about this myself yeah, on, a, on a constant yeah. basis. Mm, mm. Um, and, and just w think about the attachment of ego to that of being right mm. and that's what it's often a lot of uh, about yeah ab absolutely and so for me as well so uh, you know historically very uh, you know very righteous and wanting to have the last say uh, etc and I look back and not proud of those moments but uh, I mean that that's real right and so for me it's about my own growth and my own learning uh, and, ex and accepting that I don't need to be right and in fact I'm not right you know I'm wrong on so many occasions I'm constantly making mistakes I'm constantly you know failing at certain things but I'm okay with that because I know that that's leading me to, to, to growth it's leading me to improvement there's a number of things that I'm currently rolling out at the moment uh, some various programs where I know that uh, you know over the last few months whilst I've had a few things going on there's been elements of perfectionistic thinking for me and uh, at the moment I'm in a very good headspace where you know I'm just charging ahead and we're about to release a whole lot of stuff so you know I, I suffer from uh, from these things as much as uh, as much as the next person it's just that I'm also constantly uh, evaluating myself analyzing myself and really challenging myself when I notice that I am holding myself back um, what is it that I can do to keep moving forward it was interesting I put that post up during the week um, it was about are you engaging in your thoughts mm. Are you engaging in your thoughts? And that's a little bit about what you just said. Oh, absolutely. I talk about it here every, every week. Uh, it's, it's the two questions that you want to ask yourself at the end of every day. You know, what is it that I did well today? What can I do? And what is it that, uh, that I can improve on? Right? And they are the two questions that I've said this probably 60 times right? on this uh, particular show. It's like they are great questions for self-awareness. Self-awareness is the key. 
So self-awareness plus action from that self-awareness, that equals transformation. That's where the change happens. So firstly, you need to be aware. Then you need to take action, and when you do that, you, that's how you change your life. Whether it be your life, your business, your weight, your relationships, whatever it might be, self-awareness plus action equals transformation. Christine says you learn from your mistakes. Absolutely. Hopefully you are. That's the thing. And you're not making the mistake time and time and time again. Yeah. You know, so many people was like, oh, I'll never do that, I'll never do that again, I'll never do this, I'll never do but they, they slip back into bad habits, right? And they slip back into the, the, the old patterns, right? We are based on patterns. The way in which our mind is lined up is that we do things based on patterns, and so we have to go back. Quite often you'll hear of people who have uh, uh, certain illnesses or whatnot and will say, you know, that's it, I'm going to change my lifestyle, I'm going to change my diet, I'm going to exercise, I'm going to do all these things, and a month later... Donuts! And the, we're, going, we're going back to the old patterns, right? Donuts and ice cream. Yeah, it was. You know, <laughs> and, it's, and it's terribly unfortunate because whilst uh, outwardly, consciously, it's like, yes, I know what I need to do, but subconsciously, that's where the magic happens, and you need to work... Why are they on, doing it that way? Why, why are they not working on their subconscious? Well, what are, you know, why are they going back to the old habits? Because they haven't changed their subconscious mind. So your subconscious mind is your operating system. So consciously, I think most people know that in order to lose weight, hands down, uh, in order to lose weight, <laughs> you know, you need to uh, uh, eat, 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 eat less habits. You need to eat less uh, and move a little bit. Right? I mean, that's, 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 simple let, let, principles. Let, let's not overcomplicate Two it. Two bloody right? simple principles. But why is it that people don't do it? And there's, look, we could be here for days going through that, but one of the reasons is that people are stuck in, in the old patterns, in the old stories that they've told themselves for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Now, these things don't disappear overnight. You have to work at it. If you've thought a particular way for 15 years, never, ever, 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 ever is it going to disappear in an instant. Well, have a, have a think about the sit-up challenge that I've got going at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, Chris, well, before I talk about that, people... Christine says people like it more when one is raw and more real. Okay, so what you, I think what you're saying there, Christine, is around vulnerability. Now, I agree with that. And so if you think about social media, over uh, certainly over the last uh, year or so, there's been a massive shift in my mind from, uh, from a sort of post-produced uh, videos to you know this stuff, like live. It's just here we are, we're out here, we fumble and bumble our way, our way through it. We're being real, we've been vulnerable. What do you mean fumble and bumble? Well, well mate, we're professional. Sure, outfit. sure. And, and so, you know, we, we are improving each week by doing this. Again, it's practice, you know, but, uh, but we've been... People vulnerable. want to we've see got, the banter as well. Like, well, they want to see, yeah, you know... Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, red, get red, the red, cor up. red corner, blue corner. That's right. But, it, but it's also the vulnerability of saying, well, you know, I'm sharing with you and you share with the viewers as well some things that are very close and personal to us. Oh, there's, there's a line there, so there's some things that I don't share. But certainly I'm happy to share a number of things in the spirit of helping people, A, recognise that we are human, uh, and B, here's the way that we're able to move forward. And this might be a tip or a trick or a strategy that you can adopt uh, in your own lives. So it's about being raw, being vulnerable, being, being real. Perfect. Yeah, that's, that's what it's about. It's just about being yourself, right? As opposed to all of these post-produced videos that, uh, that used to happen. Jane, Brian, um, and we've got, uh, how do you say that name? Uh, Sashil. 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 Yeah, I'm not very good that with right, But thank you, for, uh, thank you for joining here. Great Aren't to you? have you on. Here and I, I talked Queen, about Queensland, Redland Bay. Here beautiful Queensland. <laughs> nice bay. Uh, what, we, what I was going to talk about in terms of, pe uh, well, perfectionism, uh, I guess the idea of habits that we were talking about, the sit-up challenge that I am putting together right now out of the 10 or 15 people that are doing that sit-up challenge, mm -hmm. and we're talking about good habits or daily habits to change that mindset, yes. and we've said that the 66 days is a, like to create that habit, yep. you need that 66 days. Yep. Now, it's really interesting. We've had at least probably half of those people now, and I haven't deep dived into asking each individual person, mm. but there's a number of people that have had to catch up. And no, I'm not... No it's judgment. not a bad thing. I know some of the people that are on here now that are doing the sit-up challenge. I know some people that have skipped a day and all forgot or whatever. They've been too busy. Mm -hmm. But that whole idea of what it takes to create those habits, what it takes to change that mindset mm -hmm. about exercise and uh, healthier living and mm -hmm. um, maybe losing weight, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. it takes time to do these things. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but... you. I said to Greg, who is on here right now, about the sit-up challenge. He said, well, if I miss a day, I'm going to donate some money to Lifeline um, and you know, help with mental health and so forth. So he felt good about that. Mm -hmm. But I just said, no, that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. 
if you miss a day, you've got to go back to day one mm. and start all over again. Mm. So you know the pain of it. Davina, good to have you on. And I know. Oh, hang on, Davina. Davina, on, Davina. just Davina. special mention for Davina. Davina. We've got, the, we've got the light and thank you so much. Thank you. Let there be light. Thank you, Davina. Let there be light. So let's get back onto the, the whole thing about perfectionism and being right. Think about our conversations. Uh, I know that I can get quite blunt and raw and real direct. at times. Yep. Very direct. Yep. And the, you know, there's a method to my madness as well. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, maybe sometimes for me it is about being thinking I'm right. And, and, and this is where I've got to probably take the ego away from it for yep. me. Yep, yep, ab- ab- absolutely. So I can serve even more. Yeah, ab- absolutely, because... Um, you know, different people respond differently to... Uh, so if you're very direct to some people, they might need a little softness early on, right? And so... Uh, <laughs> how's that with the hands? Hey? That's beautiful. Um, so so they, they might need a little softness, right? And so it's about being able to tailor and adapt your style as opposed to boring in. But there are certainly times when, yes, you do need to be direct with people. You know, when you might start off being soft with people and you've tried softness and that's still not working, then there are times when you do need to be direct. Uh, but one of, the, one of the things is about being able to flex your style mm. with the goal of getting people to be able to move forward. Well, that's, you know, then you start to master the art of working with someone, um, helping someone. Mirroring, pacing, all those types of things. Yeah, and I've actually found myself, uh, and this could be a reflection for other people, of actually sitting back more or realising more, engaging in my own thoughts about sitting back and listening that little bit more. Yeah. And yeah. that's probably, for me, uh, a work in progress, something that I need to be constantly thinking about. How am I sitting back? How am I allowing someone to explore their thoughts out of the questions that I'm asking? Really sit back. Well, which is great, right? And so the thing there is that uh, you've got two of these and you've got one of these. And so as a minimum, listen twice as much as you talk. So ask great questions. And then like you're doing, mate, you sit back and you listen, you soak it up. Because like you said, um, it's about where is that person at? Where are they at? Because sometimes they may need the directors. They may need the the boot and the bum. But other times they might need a cuddle. And you might need to hold their hand a little bit. There's a whole range of reasons. And so it's about recognising that it's not a one-size-fits-all, and that's the beautiful thing about being human, right? We all have our own frailties, we're all very different, and, uh, and as coaches, uh, we need to be able to flex uh, to, uh, to, to get the best out in people. Ultimately, that's it. Uh, Davina's saying, welcome, guys. Thank you so much, Davina. I really appreciate uh, the light. Uh, and uh, such a surprise here for Luke when he got it this morning. We unwrapped uh, the wrapping. It was a bit like Christmas morning here. So we've had all the celebrations. We've had 950 runs in a row. Well, he has. I've had one in a row. Uh, we've had... Christine uh, would love a cuddle. Uh, Terrific. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm not sure how we can make that happen for you, Christine. Christine, thank, thank virtual you. hug. Vir- virtual hug. Uh, we've had uh, 60, 60 of these. This is our 60th, 60 mindset session. Uh, and we've got uh, the light from you, Davina. I, I did ask Davina during the week, I said, because she told me, I told her that I was going to give it to you on Sunday morning. And I said, have you got anything profound? That you want, you, do you want to say as oh, uh, you know? Is there any sort okay. of profound comment? And uh, be and the, be- the best you come up with was uh, something on the lines of "Let there be light." So uh, <laughs> I, did, I did say to her, "You can do better than that." Unfortunately, she hasn't come back to me since. So, Davina, here's your opportunity. So maybe now, it's the light inside and outside. Could be. So that's where it gets profound and deep. Could be. Could be. Bring D- up Davina, the light. Why don't you Why light. don't you share here publicly on Facebook your most profound? Statement around the light. So we look forward and to And you seeing know what, Davina, anyone else? Anyone Anything else, please. Yeah, you absolutely. feel that is profound about you right now, or profound about what we're saying, or profound about perfectionism? Uh, let's get on to the second point. It is around why do we need to get it right? Why do we actually need to get it right? Why do we need to, to think about being of, the, of right all the time? Well, it's, it's because we're worried if we don't get it right the people criticise us. The single biggest fear that I believe humans have is the fear of being criticised by the people. Why? Because we're a herd mentality. We like connectedness. We like being part of the community. That's part of what being a human is. It's all about being connected. If you do something that's wrong, you are worried then that someone will criticise you, have a go at you. And so what I find the majority of people do in that instance is they do nothing. 
that are nothing. Donuts, more donuts. Right? And so it's like, well, if I can't be perfect, I'm not going to do anything at all. And I just think it's incredibly sad because you're not tapping into your potential. You're not uh, realising the dreams that you've got for yourself. See, all of us, whether whether it be you when you got your first property, uh, you know, me when I got into property development, uh, you know, you when you left your job, me when I left my job, right? We didn't get this stuff right, right? And I continue to not get things right. I continue to improve every day. But for me, it's all around PBs, personal best. What can I learn from it? How can I improve? How can I be better today than I was yesterday? And how can I be better tomorrow than I am today? And if you take that mindset or that approach into your life, then even if you improve by that much each and every day over the course of a week, a month, a year, then all of a sudden you've gone from here to here. It's just that people want to go from here to here instantaneously, and it just doesn't work that way. I think I shared uh, last week with everybody that I was having a business coaching uh, session with someone. And we talked about uh, instead of trying to find one thing that was going to deliver 100% of the sales increase, why don't we find 100 things that deliver 1% of the sales increase? Let's deliver on those and we're going to get the same result. It's just that people are looking for that, that magic, you know, the silver bullet or that one thing that's going to go bam, but it, it just doesn't work that way. It's just consistent and persistent effort. That's the key to success. Put on your cape, C-A-P-E, consistent and persistent effort. That's a little tagline Tony likes go. to talk yeah, about. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all this is very interesting, isn't it? It is. It I is. just, you know, there's some profound comments that oh, are coming that, through that, right that, now. That, that, um, Christine says, we need to worry less about uh, what other people think. We do, we do. I, I talk about zero cares. I actually, you know, I, I know Gary actually says zero fucks yeah. around that. You know, it just, who cares what other people think? We need to, and I'm, I'm, t I'm saying this to people on a constant basis. Yep. Well, I was like, oh, so and so is telling me this. I went, zero cares. Oh, I'm worried about this. I went, zero cares. If we can take, keep teaching, like I'm, you know, talking about it to myself, yeah. so I realise for myself when my subconscious, you know, holds me back or has some fear around yep. what's going on, yep. then I actually. Remember that zero cares. Linda, good to have you on as well. And challenge yourself. So for example, with me, I gave up drinking in January of 2017. So I haven't drunk alcohol in three and a half years. Now, if you want to challenge the views of other people uh, and really see what other people think, then give up drinking. Give it up for a weekend, uh, for a couple of weeks, and watch the comments that come your way. People go, oh my gosh, what's wrong with you? you, you blah, 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 carry on, right? And I understand that drinking a great part of the Aussie culture, for me, I said to myself, well, if I can break through that, right, and get through all the criticism from everybody, and I copped it from everywhere, uh, and now three and a half years later, I'll, I'll never drink again. But the point is that I was able to push through all that criticism as a way of uh, making myself stronger mentally. So, A, it's great from a health perspective that I don't uh, drink, uh, and I'm not here to, to talk about that. It's more around the mental aspect of being able to push through the negative comments uh, that people want to criticise you because you stopped drinking. Absolutely. Um, you know, more and more. I, and I, I think this is where I'm, I'm thinking about engaging for myself in terms of getting out there more. And I, it actually makes me consider all these, all these other things that we do. Are we actually getting ourselves to a perspective of we actually need to make, be making more mistakes. We need to be actually challenging ourselves more. We need to be almost looking for those times where we're going to be embarrassed or fail or get things wrong. Well, that, that's actually the way that you overcome perfectionism. So it's a good uh, segue in because this is how you do it. So how you do it is you, is you do things where you're not perfect. So maybe, uh, you know, maybe, you know, you go out without having your makeup perfect for a day and just notice what's going to happen. Uh, maybe you get on and you do, uh, you do a video and you say, I'm going to produce, I'm going to publish the first take of this video. Even better, just go and do the damn thing live, right? Then, then that is your first take. So you go and do those things and I'll guarantee you that the sky will still be up, right? The sky will still be up. But in fact, people will compliment you for getting out there and, and having a go. And I've raw seen and real. Yeah, raw and real. And I've I think seen like it time, said time and time again. You know, people love when people are just being true to themselves and being vulnerable. Uh, it's just that we are holding ourselves back. So find that something. Just have a go at one thing. One thing that really challenges your perfectionistic thinking and just see what happens. See what the outcome is. And I guarantee you that the sky will still be there, um, you know, after you've done it. Maybe you like stand inside a cafe and do some star jumps. 
Yeah, you could do that, right? I mean, uh, we could we could do it now, right? I'm, gosh, I'm freezing. Uh, I am pretty cold. Hey, it is cold. <laughs> <laughs> it is, what else we got, mate? Uh, Mark says, when you turn on the light, the darkness goes. Oh, I love very profound, more... Mark. I Here like it. Thank you. Mark, very good. Mark is part of the sit-up challenge as well. Yeah, Doing great. really good well. Good. Simon, Simon, Brett, and a few others uh, that have joined. Uh, let's move on to the third point, Tony. Is it perfectionism? Is it truly you? Think about that for a moment. Hmm. And what made you this way? Yeah. Is it really truly you to be perfect? One of the other questions to ask yourself is, uh, what are you missing out on? So by being perfect, by striving for perfectionism all the time, what are you leaving on the table? Right, again, uh, regret is going to be the biggest thing that the majority of people have to deal with at the end of their life. Uh, and I don't want to be one of them. I don't know, you don't want to be one of them. Uh, and so it's a case of you want to get ahead of the curve now and what is it that you're missing out on? So you challenge yourself through a whole range of questions. You know, is there really a thing as perfect? The answer is no, there's not. Right? No, there's not perfect. You know, even a guy who's gone and run 950 days in succession doesn't mean that that's, uh, that's perfection, right? There's, uh, and it's also a case of don't compare yourself to that. Like, it's PB, personal best. Wherever you are, wherever you are, do one thing better today than you were yesterday. Like, if you haven't run before, then get out and put some shoes on and walk a couple of hundred metres or run a couple of hundred metres. And you know what? That's an improvement, right? You don't have to go and run a marathon from day one. Actually, something Tony said before uh, we got on camera here today, mm. he said, you know, I'm thinking about my personal best in terms of times, mm. but each and every day I've got a personal best in terms of the number of days yep. that I've run. Yep. So it's, it's how we perceive it within ourselves. I actually didn't think about it in the way that Tony just said, mm. just said that. Mm. It's just like I'm doing a personal best each and every day because of the fact of running those uh, well, you've never, you've daily never run, challenge. You've never run 950 days in succession. Never, ever, ever, right? No. So, so each day, so tomorrow morning when you put on your shoes, uh, you will be running 951. You will have never, ever done that previously. That's right. Each day for you is a personal best. But again... So that's Luke's example, right? And so he's looking for how do I be better today than I was yesterday? Uh, but also for you, what is the one thing that you can do that's slightly different? What is the one thing that you can do to improve? Again, personal best, constantly think about that. But you're never, ever, ever going to have perfectionism. It's just not going to happen. So you need to uh, either accept that, you need to have those conversations with people around you. None of us are perfect, but we can always improve. And there's a really distinct difference because improvement is, is about uh, being better, whereas perfectionistic thinking is about holding you back. It prevents you from actually achieving the thing uh, that you want to achieve. Right, and and you can do amazing things, but if it's not quite perfect, then you think to yourself you're a failure. And what happens is people who have perfectionistic thinking head down the path of depression because they might ha have a goal to, uh, let's say they've got a goal to get 66 days of sit-ups, and they might get to 65, and then not get to 66, and they'll see themselves as being a failure. Whereas the other way is to go, you know what? You actually did 65 days in a row. Like, that's bloody awesome, and you've never done 65 days in a row again. It's all around the meaning. It's all around that angle that we come at. It's that glass half full, glass half empty. We can look at the exact same thing, and what's that interpretation that we get from it? Kamal says, what is perfect? That's absolutely right. Exactly. Um, there's there's no, no such thing. Uh, no, well, so there are people who, for example, in sports, they may want to do 10 perfect passes, like 10 passes, or 10, if you're goal kicking. Well, what would be perfect? Well, goal kicking would be 10 goals in a row, for example. That would be perfect. And so what will happen is people might get to nine in a row, which is awesome, but because they didn't get the 10th, they'll think, oh my gosh, you know, that's bloody terrible. I, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I feel really sad and angry at myself, as opposed to celebrating the fact that I got nine. So I would argue that that could be an example of, of what perfect could look like. Yeah. Uh, but in regards to a personal development side of things, yes. And you know, here's the other thing. It doesn't really matter because we, we, none of us are going to get there. And so it's about always striving to be better today than I was yesterday. And so here we are on Sunday morning. What can you do today that just inches you a little step forward that you to make you better than what you were yesterday? Kamal also says per, uh, perfect is subjective. Yeah, it is. But I guess, you know, I, I did harp on the word before Tony 
clarified the, those ideas. But let's just think about the intention of it. The intention is to get things right all the time, right? Mm. So that's the intention behind the word is what Tony used as the example, nine goals out of 10, that's not perfect. So um, think about the intention that really it creates within ourselves because that's what we're thinking about when we're thinking about perfect is getting 10 out of 10 of striving each and every day. Um, and if we don't get that 10th one, then we struggle with our own thoughts and whatever um, and whatever oh, goes and, on. And so I think about this from a from a, a um, from a child point of view. You think back to when you're at school, uh, and certainly there was the pressure to get 10 out of 10 in spelling or in maths or whatever. And if you didn't get 10 out of 10, no one was going to sit there and praise you. It's like, well, you didn't get 10 out of 10. And so this is where a lot of these um, you know perfectionistic oh, thinking yeah. starts from, right? And it's like, oh, my gosh, you didn't get 10 out of 10. You know, what a failure, blah, 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 blah. And even though that mightn't be said as directly as that, it's certainly implied, that sits with people. You know, at that age when kiddies are young and impressionable and forming, uh, that sits with them. And they take that level of thinking through the rest of their life. And, and so what So so much is being, you know, done by whether teachers, parents or whatever, mm. on saying you've got to get, like, you know, 100% on your yeah. high school certificate or yeah. whatever it might be. Yeah. You've got to, you know, get 10 out of 10 like Tony said. Yep. Rather than people going, well, what is the effort you're putting in? Because mm. the effort you put in at school years and whatever... The effort piece is not talked about enough, I feel. Yeah. And I think the effort that you put in at school is really going to reflect on the efforts that you put in when it comes to jobs, when it comes to careers, business, um, property investing, whatever it might be. Um, coaching yourself, yep. working with other people, working in teams. Exactly. The effort piece is just so much more important. Oh, 100%. And, it's, and then it's about, take that a step further, it's about loving the effort stuff, loving the journey. This is a journey. Life is one big journey, right? And you want to love what you do. And if you don't love what you do, then, uh, you know, do something about it. If you're not happy with this, do something about it. I go back to the point I made probably 15 minutes ago around regret. A lot of people are going to end up at the end of their life and they're going to have this enormous amount of regret because they're going to look back at 2020 and they're going to say, I missed an opportunity. I shoulda, coulda, woulda, and I didn't. And I didn't because I wanted it to be perfect and I failed to take that first step, as opposed to taking the first step and just figuring it out uh, along the way, which is you know, what I've done, you've done, uh, and so many others who have uh, forged down the entrepreneurial path have done as well. It's not perfect, it never will be perfect, but we want to be better today than we were yesterday. You've just got to keep having that mindset. Uh, Greg says, couldn't agree with you more. That's awesome. Uh, Linda, Samuel have also come on. Kristen says, just strive to do your personal best, yes. your PB. That's Absolutely. It. You got We're it. about PBs. Um, in the 66 example, if I, if you've done one out of sixty-six as opposed to sixty-four out of sixty-five, is there a difference there? Is there a difference? Well, it's, again, it's about being better than where you were. So, if you haven't done any uh, sit-ups and you do one day of sit-ups, we've improved. Mm. If you've come from zero to do one, that's awesome. Uh, like I said with Luke before, Luke's done nine hundred and fifty days in a row. Tomorrow, he's going to break his PB. He's going to do 951 and the next day 952, etc. But if you're in sit-ups, if you do one day of sit-ups and then you string a second day together, well, there's your PB, right? So again, it's all around the perspective and the meaning and the interpretation that we take uh, on these things. Hopefully that's yeah, answered your question, it, Kamal. You know, I, I think it actually is a judging piece as well. Mm. So I guess your question, Kamal, comes from a, an area of judgment. I was like, oh, well, I've done better here than there. But you've done something mm. as well. So I guess... You start on day one out of, out of 66, but then if you miss day two, then you start back on day one. And the, the whole thing about the 66 is creating that habit. Good. So if you can actually keep going and you get to day 10 and you miss day, day 11, go back to day one, start it all over again. This is how you create habits because then they become part of your subconscious, part of your conscious, part of your way of life each and every day. That's why we talk about it. It just... You know, are you judging those achievements that you're, you're doing yourself? And that's where it comes back to comparing yourself to others, um, judging yourself about what you're doing, you know, whether you're, you know, constantly failing at things or you're not achieving things or whatever it might be. And this is, can really get yourself into a perspective of getting into depressive states. Hmm. And that's where you've got to be careful on Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So there is a fine line around what we're talking about, but it, it's just swing it to the positive side of it 
rather than to the negative side of it. Thoughts become things. I used the example maybe four or five weeks ago around Phil Mickelson, and I was talking around uh, Phil Mickelson, a great left-handed uh, golfer uh, from America, and he was talking about uh, when he first got into the uh, into the PGA, uh, what he was doing. He was wanting to string together, uh, you know, I think it was 50 or 100 putts in a row, doesn't really matter, uh, and it took him two days to do it, right? So he kept going, he might get to 40, back to the start, he's going for 50, get to 40, whatever. His point was that he just stuck with that until he got the number of putts. What happened was there was another younger guy who was coming into the PGA who was wanting who asked Phil, "Hey, why is it that you're you're so good?" And Phil started to talk to him about you know this putting exercise. And this guy gave up after half a day. He said, "No, I couldn't get there. Couldn't get there. Couldn't get there." And and, and he gave up. So then the other piece is around the persistence side of things, sticking with it, sticking with it, creating the habit, creating that habit for 66 days. Mark says, I think you've used this one before, um, Tony. If you can't walk, uh, ru- if you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. And you'll realise you can do a lot more Absolutely. than you think you can. A- Absolutely. Qu- crawl, walk, run. I say it all the time. And it's all around how do we start as, as, as babies? We started by crawling and then we walked and then we ran. The problem is that a lot of people want to go from um, lying on the backs to running, uh, whereas it's all about crawl, a walk, and then run, and recognise that if you go from lying on your back to crawling, that's improvement. I'm and that's go, Mark's point. I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent, sure. like uh, before we sort of wrap things up today, but it's something that I saw from Simon Sinek, mm-hmm. uh, really interesting, about the whole idea about um, whether you're, you know, it's around your skills, right? Your knowledge, your experience, and that sort of thing. Um, as opposed to uh, when times are tough, and, and right now we're going through the coronavirus, and this is maybe something we can talk about a little bit next week. I have to remember this. Yeah, we've got to remember <laughs> this week at the end of it. But it's about attributes, right? Yeah. What, it, what happens to ourselves when times are a little bit tougher? When times are, you know, it, it is tough. And, and we don't know what's going on with ourselves, and but it's the, what come what type of people come to the fall when times are tough? What kind of attributes within yourself? And it's hard to sort of quantify and measure these. That's is, is, is what they were talking about yesterday. But if you practice, practice, practice something all the time, then you're in a in a zone of yeah, you you you, you could be really good at that type of thing. But when there's more pressure, more uh, tough times and other things come on top of that, then what comes to the fore? It's your attributes, your patience, um, your willingness to uh, rise to the challenge. Yeah, yeah. Resi- so again, if I use sport as an example, so uh, let's take let's take AFL football. Uh, when there are people at the training, when they're doing their training, I'll guarantee you that some of those goal kickers they'll be getting, I don't know, ninety percent uh, success. They'll be you know, slotting those goals from left, right, and centre. But you put them out on the on the field on a Saturday. Uh, it's an important game. It's in September. It's finals. Uh, you've got in the MCG. You've got you know 100,000 fans. Whatever it might be, uh, it's called pressure, right? It's called pressure. And, you, and so sport is a really good analogy for life. And so it's about yes, we can all be champions uh, in the training paddock. But the true growth happens when you're in that pressure cooker situation. That's why when you get to the AFL, you're you're a you're a good footballer. Right, yeah. well, NRL, you're a good footballer, but what is it that separates the good from the great? And the good those from 1%. the great, yeah, it's the one percenters, and, it, and it's about being able to deal with those situations. You see it in rugby league in the in the uh, in the state of origins, right? Again, they're good. You've got good footballers in the state of origins, you know, but you've then got the greats, the greats that can just rise up. You know, and, and they do it so easily. They do it so effort, effortlessly. You look at the likes of uh, Usain Bolt when he's running. I mean, he's just—he looks to be cruising out the time, and he's, he's got—he's got nine point eight, uh, nine point eight for the hundred or whatever it is, because it's so effortless, right? It's so effortless. Uh, but that—that's the thing. It's like uh, you know, there's there's pressure. There's the ability to deal with uh, uh, so be resilient, uh, etc. And you're right, Luke, that we can all be champions when things are going well. You know, when things are going well, you've got enough money to pay your bills, you've got money for holidays, etc., then you can be absolute champions. The, the challenge is when times are tough, when you're put in those difficult situations. Exactly. 
who stands up, who rises to the challenge. And this is what we're talking about right exactly. now, that I've been reporting on or, or commenting on, on Facebook posts because people are so negative about what's going on right now, mm. rather than thinking different. And on the back of that, it's something that I've challenged myself on. Mm. And I put out there about, about like, uh, with all this is going on with the corona pandemic, mm. I was like, I'm creating a smile pandemic in August. Yeah, absolutely. So post on social media your smile. I'm doing it each and every day through August and reposting other people's photos so that we can bring more smiles. Maybe that sm those smiles sometimes might bring out joy, might bring out um, a real good community aspect, but might really bring a perspective of being uh, just better within yourself. And you just don't know what all these chemicals are doing around our body sometimes. Oh, Maybe it will lighten up. If you're stressed and anxious and whatever, chances are that your immune system is going to be shutting down a little bit more. Oh, ab absolutely. Right. Rather than you can smile, high. have fun, have some banter and um, enjoy the, the life each and every day, then hopefully through this small pandemic that I'm creating, and it, and it was actually then challenged uh, from a friend of mine who's actually over on the other side of the world um, to just start posting. And both of us now are posting a lot of smiling photos of people. So have, hopefully that creates a bit more of a community out there and that's what it's all about. Well, it's about kindness, happiness, community. Again, go back to the point we're making, we're a herd mentality. So if you're struggling in the in the herd that you're in, uh, come over to this herd, join the smile pandemic, uh, etc. So it's about finding finding those, th yeah, absolutely, finding those people. I did a post recently as well on uh, growth mindset, and I talked about that it won't stop your problems from, from occurring. So problems are going to happen, right? The bad uh, stuff is going to happen to each and every one of us, and it's going to continue to happen to each and every one of us at different levels. That's the facts. That's Smile the reality. Through it. Right? It's now about how do you deal with that? How do you deal with that? So rather than focusing on the solution, uh, sorry, the problem, right, and getting myself fixated on the past, when I look at the problem, I'm looking backwards. Instead of doing that, I want to focus on the solution, which is in front of me. So, so I'm looking in a forwards direction and taking my thoughts to where I want to go as opposed to whinging, whining, and complaining about the thing that's already happened because those bad things will continue to happen at various levels. And, and you know, certainly right now with the COVID stuff, it's, it's, it's bad. It's tough going. Again, we don't, we're not downplaying that. So what, we, what we're saying is, how do you respond to that? You have a choice as to how you respond to that. And uh, Luke's starting the smile pandemic. What else we got, mate? Uh, Greg, also uh, when we post that, we have done our sit-ups yeah. for the day uh, and get encouragement from others helps us to continue. So I love it. teamwork, accountability, yeah. um, pat, joy pat, that pats, we... Pats on the back, all those sorts of things. Yeah, we love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Kamal says, um, same said to me, uh, this bad weather, I said to him, is washing away the coronavirus. <laughs> Well, absolutely, but use bad weather as an example. Bad weather, storms, storms, uh, they don't come to stay, they, they come to pass, right? So storms pass through and then you end up with, you know, beautiful days like uh, like this here today in Yeah, Brisbane. but you know what, actually, I saw a post this morning. Right. Rain makes flowers. There you go. Right, we need water. Ab Rain ab makes flowers. There you go. Yeah, ab absolutely. So again, it's it's the perspective, it's the it's all about the, the how meaning. You that see how you think. How you feel. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right, that's a good way to How wrap do you it up. Feel, mate? I'm feeling good, man. Hey? I'm feeling good. I've done 900, this. 950 runs in a row, 60, sit -ups. 60 SMSs. You've done your sit ups. You're here, look where you are. Absolutely gorgeous. Great. Where, where else would you want to be? Nowhere. Queensland. Nowhere <laughs> Queensland. <laughs> All right. We love it. We love it up here. I don't think mum came on today, so we can probably talk about oh. that. Uh, Mark says on fire. On Absolutely. Fire. Thank you, Mark. All right, guys. See you over and out. Have a great Sunday wherever Bye. you are. Love your work. Bye. Bye.